let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about a passive solar greenhouse and what that is and what we define it as. So a passive solar greenhouse has four, count them four, main aspects to it. The first one is a transparent material that's also insulative. So the majority of passive solar greenhouses out there will have a double wall polycarbonate or an air inflated poly or double pane or triple pane glass on the wall that's facing the south sun. The second aspect of a passive solar greenhouse is they're oriented east and west. They tend to be long, uh, think rectangles, a very long stretched out rectangle. And their greenhouses normally when we think of them are situated north and south, but a passive solar greenhouse or a solar greenhouse is situated east and west, as you can see in the pictures. The third thing is an insulated north wall. And a passive solar greenhouse, when it's facing south to the sun, it doesn't get any sun on the north wall. So the north wall, rather than have a low insulation transparent material, is just insulated as best as humanly possible. The fourth aspect to a passive solar greenhouse is a thermal battery of some sort. Now, the Chinese greenhouses are in fact passive solar greenhouses to a large degree, and they'll use the north wall not just as insulation, but as a thermal battery. In North America, they'll do one of two things. They'll either insulate the north wall and put water barrels along it, because water tends to have much better thermal capacity than clay or anything else, or they'll go into the ground. And they'll use some sort of geo air system charging the ground with the energy from the passive solar greenhouse. Now, passive solar greenhouses tend to strive by the belief that all the energy within the greenhouse is enough energy to heat it through the cold winters and that you can charge either a north wall or the ground and pull that energy back out and use that to heat your greenhouse in the cold weather and often do it somewhat seasonally. I I'm not 100% in agreement with this, but let's explore the concept and uh, break it down into different pieces as we go forward here. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we have piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing. You can check out after watching this video. Um, we also have tons of videos on greenhouse heating and cooling and using geothermal systems and geo air systems, solar systems, and even evaporative type systems and other cool type off-grid technology and on-grid as well to heat a greenhouse cheap. You need to check out our archives on our channel after you watch this video if greenhouses and growing are something that you're into. So the first thing you're going to see when you see a solar greenhouse is you're going to see the orientation, which is east-west. They tend to be long, not very wide, and they're taking advantage of the fact that in a northern climate, northern United States, Canada, northern Europe, even northern China, what happens in the winter is the sun isn't directly overhead. It's actually quite a bit down in the sky, in the southern sky. And to take advantage of that and get sun all day long, you orient your greenhouse so that the light accesses the greenhouse from the south. So to do that, your greenhouse as a rectangle is facing east-west. And it actually works quite well to get more sun in the cold weather to do it like this. The second part of a solar greenhouse, and there is a small exception to this, and that's a Chinese greenhouse. And they have a an out that gets them around this little problem. But in North America in particular, and China's getting better, if you're going to do a solar greenhouse, you need to have some sort of insulative transparent material. Now, there's a few options you can look at to do this. You can use double air inflated poly, uh, which is one of the cheapest, most effective options. And it doesn't just add insulation by using air inflated poly, but it. I'm, I'm a user of double air inflated poly on my greenhouse. And what's amazing about it is it acts like a pillow in a large wind. 
If I had only single poly on my greenhouse, it would be torn apart when the winds get to be over 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour. It would tear itself to pieces. But it just bounces off when it's double air inflated poly. The next option is, of course, polycarbonate. And you can get double and triple and even four or five and six layers. But with every layer of polycarbonate, you lose something like 8% of the sun's transmissive rays. So the suggestion that I've seen from most places is to just run with double polycarbonate, but get the biggest air gap that you can between it. Very thin air gaps don't give you as much insulation as a thicker air gap would. The same thing goes for glass. The better double pane glass, insulated glass, has a bigger air gap between it. The cheaper stuff has a smaller air gap. Now, of course, the next grade up is to have it argon filled or something like that. And this all depends on your budget and what you're going to do with your greenhouse. But a lot of people will use recycled windows as their transparent material, which is a cheap way to get a really good translucent material to uh, act in your solar greenhouse or your passive solar greenhouse. The insulated north wall is a concept that in a northern climate makes sense. This is just smart all around. When you are orienting your greenhouse east and west so that you have sun all day long as the sun travels across the southern sky on your plants in the winter, the north wall doesn't need to be transparent in any way. So even your best, absolute best transparent materials, let's say it's triple pane glass, argon filled, you're looking at an R3, R3.5, and this is best case scenario humanly possible. But cheap insulation will give you an R10, good insulation, R20 or more. So why would you want a transparent material on your north wall? Um, one thing you can actually do outside of insulating your north wall is you can actually make it reflective so that the light that comes in from the south bounces off your north wall and double hits your plants. So you have the light coming in from the front or from the south, bouncing off the north wall and coming back at your plants, which is going to give your plants more sunlight in the reduced hours of sunlight in the winter that you experience in northern climates. Good idea. The fourth aspect to a solar, a passive solar greenhouse is thermal heat storage. Now, whether it's just storing it for the night or whether it's trying to store it for a season is two different approaches completely. If you're just trying to get through the night, um, the Chinese greenhouses do this fairly well by using a thermal mass. What they'll do is they'll take the north wall and they'll use brick or clay or mud or some sort of material like that, that during the day, they'll paint the north wall a dark material or dark black. And the north wall will absorb heat all during the day, which at night, that heat comes back out and heats your plants up. So that if you're in not too cold of a climate, uh, something that gets down to minus five Celsius, a Chinese type greenhouse with a north mass wall or a thermal mass north wall will radiate enough heat back out to keep your plants above freezing inside the greenhouse. Now, in North America, they went a step further. And what they did is they started digging into the ground. They would insulate around the four corners down maybe eight feet, give or take, depending on who's building it. And then they would put air tubes, which is basically four inch weeping tile, and a lot of it through the ground and coming up into the greenhouse. So that what they would do is they would, during the day when it's hot, suck the air from the hot air from the greenhouse and push it down into the ground. And the ground would then cool down that air and the air coming out the other end of the weeping tile would cool down the greenhouse, which is a great thing during the day. I mean, this is air conditioning, cheap air conditioning at that. And then at night, they do the same thing, but the ground, because it's been heated up a bit during the day and it's not below freezing when you go down, it's just colder than it is. If it's, you know, 25 degrees Celsius during the day, the ground going down eight feet might be 10 degrees Celsius, but this is heat. So if you start pushing the air through that at night, you're going to get heat into your greenhouse. And that's all the plants want is maybe 10 degrees. So if it's going down to minus five, but you're keeping it at plus 10 degrees Celsius in your greenhouse, your plants are happy, happy, grow, grow, grow. So that's what North American solution is. And they'll take the north wall and just have it as insulation and maybe make it reflective. And they'll go down rather than to the north wall for thermal energy storage. And by going down 
they can get into a deeper winter. So the one thing that I'm finding different between the passive solar greenhouses that we find in North America and the Chinese greenhouses, although some North American passive solar greenhouses do this, and we probably should do it more, is the thermal blanket. The Chinese are onto something here. Now, it takes a little bit of work unless you've got the money to put an automated system in. But the thermal blanket takes a transparent material that's facing the sun that's maybe an R2 even a single layer material and turns it into an R4 or an R5 or higher with a thermal blanket that rolls down once the sun goes down at night to keep the heat in. So sure, it's not going to be an R10 or an R20, but an R5 or even an R4 is a hell of a lot better than any transparent material with air gaps that you could ever hope for. So it allows you to even look at single layer plastic during the day when the sun is your main heat source and heating up your greenhouse and then drop a thermal blanket on top of that to take that single layer plastic from an R.1 to an R5. And it's not that expensive to look at a thermal blanket. In many cases, a thermal blanket is less money than doing double layer polycarbonate. Um, an air inflated double poly may be cheaper than a thermal blanket, but it's a middle road that provides even better insulation at night. And the insulation issue really happens at night because that's when it gets cold and it's cheaper often to keep heat than to create new heat. So is a passive solar greenhouse a Chinese greenhouse? Probably. There are almost two names for the same thing. But for some reason in North America, they like the term passive solar greenhouse. And in China, they like to call it a Chinese greenhouse. They both work. They both work well in cold climates. And depending on the level of insulation and how you incorporate thermal heating into them, you can go into some pretty cold climates. Myself, I believe in active solar greenhouses. I believe the solar greenhouse design is genius. It's fantastic. And if you live in a northern climate and you're not using a solar greenhouse, there's something's wrong with you. You should be insulating your north wall. You should have some sort of insulated transparent material. I believe you should be oriented east-west to take advantage of more sunlight. And you should be looking at some sort of thermal mass or some sort of thermal way to store energy. Um, if you do that, you, and you don't even want to work in January and February, you're going to go later in the fall and you're going to start earlier in the spring. And that means more crops, better crops, earlier crops, and you're going to have food and or commercial crops before everyone else. And that's where the money is.